Hello and welcome to another exciting edition of Wisconsin MMA Today. I'm Scott Jaffe and I'm joined by co-host Wisconsin Combat Sports, Paul Flatton. Begin. Be be begin. North American Fighting Championship lightweight bout featuring in the red corner from Adrian Serrano's Combat Academy in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Matt Eisenzimmer taking on Rufus Sport MMA Academy, Luis Cool Whip Garcia, also out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Let's start picking up the action now at the beginning of the second round. You know, Scott, for fans that love striking, this is that fight that you don't want to miss. Both guys come into this just ready to, to bang. Both stay on their feet, and we definitely see one striker a little more superior than the other with speed. You're definitely going to see that as the action gets underway here. Sounds good, Paul. Taking a look now at Luis Cool Whip Garcia fighting out of the Tiffin Red Corner. Matt Eisenzimmer out of the Showtime Sports Bar and Grill Blue Corner. You can, if you see in the background, there is a ton of fans there supporting Luis Cool Whip Jr. He brings an audience. I mean, early on, it's just you, you'll be able to see it right away. Luis moves around, moves those feet very well, whereas Einzimmer kind of stays right and looks, you know, for the quick jab. Luis is bobbing that head, picking up the leg. He he's fast. He has excellent cardio and he does move around the cage a lot, but he's prepared for it. He does what a lot of fighters actually should do. He's not, he's not out of control. He's just keeping, you know, Matt off pace. He's, he's not really letting him on to, you know, what he's going to do next. If he's going to strike, is, is he going to shoot? I mean, obviously Luis is known as a striker, but he's awesome on the ground as well. Yeah, and you see him just changing levels. You see him, you know, definitely looking for that strike at a different angle and just always looking for that finish. You know, coming in this fight, he was undefeated with three victories. He, th he throws, and you gotta, you got to watch out with him because if, you if you're not protecting your chin, you're going to get hit. Eisenzimmer watching his range here, doing a good job of it. He knows Luis is waiting to launch that one big bomb, and I think Matt's doing a good job of just keeping his range and waiting to inflict some damage on his own, if he can. Yeah, I was impressed by both guys, you know, at this point and throughout this fight. Both guys were able to take a lot of punishment and also deliver, deliver it in their own regard. Let's watch some of the action now. Again, this fight was mostly a stand-up battle. Yeah, a few times Eisen Zimmer would go for the takedown. You'll see just the try here. And he was able to put Garcia on his back. I mean, early in the first round, Eisen Zimmer landed two takedowns, and right away Garcia was able to get the reverse and just get back on top. And it really shows a lot that he's working those hips. Right there, you know, that those are the reverses that he was able to. You know, he goes to the ground, you think, oh no, the striker's down. But he shows just a lot, his game's way more polished than maybe he gets credit for, and is able to get on top and, you know, start scoring points of his own. Yeah, it's very nice lightning fast reversal on Cool Whip's part. Again, I as in Zimmers, he's staying calm. It's a good fight. Both fighters well matched. Yeah, you see him trapping the leg there, just not gonna give up too much. You know, it's hard, you know, it's hard to land big shots there, but Garcia is able to change there and do some good stuff. Yeah, he starts to kind of turn around a little bit here towards the end of the round as we near. Working the head and body a little bit. A lot of his punches are connecting. You know, you know, it was it was cool lips round to begin with, and then especially at the end here to be able to, you know, to get top position and then you know get the back here and definitely put some strikes on. Definitely impressed the judges and made this his round. Not much Eisenzimmer can do other than cover up. Garcia try, trying to get that stoppage. If you can just flurry a little bit more, 
He might. You know, it's just time where you gotta hope that he doesn't try the choke, so you try to, you know, tell the ref you're okay as much as you can while you're under there. Luckily, that bell sounded, and he was able, you know, he's gonna be able to go back out for round three here. But as you can see in the corner, he's feeling the effects of those strikes. You know, he, you know, he's a he's a gamer. He's gonna keep going, but definitely Garcia put put it on him at the end and really showed, you know, he was the faster and stronger fighter. It looks like all of Adrian Serrano's fighters are gamers. He has not brought a fighter to North American Fighting Championship that hasn't brought their a game or at least gave it uh, their best in, inside the ring just like Adrian always did you know that's something we saw from him way back in way early UFC days Adrian is gonna fight no matter what and his guys really you know really take that to heart and you can definitely you can always tell a, a fighter by his coach and Adrian Serrano's combat sports is definitely one of those gyms round three action about to get underway again for the lightweight uh, 155 North American Fighting Championship bout. This is in the blue corner. Matt Eisenzimmer out of Adrian Serrano's Combat Academy in Milwaukee and also out of Milwaukee. Luis Cool Whip Garcia representing Rufus Sport MMA Academy. Yeah, and you see referee Tommy Felice there. He did a great job all throughout, I thought, too. So props to him on a great night of work. Some, that should, uh, some thought he should have uh, stopped that at the end of the second round, but here's Matt Eisenzimmer. He's ready to do battle again for the third round. You know, obviously, but, uh, Eisenzimmer showed him something, so he thought he could come back, but as you uh, said, maybe it was should have done. And Luis, I think, uh, smells a, a finish here, and he's going to start turning it on a little bit. Yeah, he comes out like a, like a shark smelling blood. He comes out, you know, knowing that he's going to land at will. And, you know, he's just hitting, hitting, hitting. And, you know, in the corner, we're right here in Defleece's corner, you know, we're right here in Eisen Zimmer's corner. Adrian Serrano's watching this saying, oh, man, my guy's taking a beating. And, you know, it's hard to see it, but the towel comes in. Yeah, it's right behind the referee there. So just as Defleece calls the bout, Coach Serrano tosses the towel in. Can't fault either of them. I thought, it, yeah, I thought it was a good move. In, in another win for Luis Garcia, who was undefeated and is really shown to be a pretty heavy player here in the amateur ranks. Yeah, definitely would like to see Matt Eisenzimmer back on North American Fighting Championship. Again, he's a gamer. Luis Garcia has got a big, bright future ahead of him, and I know all fans are looking forward to seeing him in his next fight. All right, Wisconsin MMA Today reporter Paul Vladden here with Luis Cool Whip Garcia. Another win, man. You look great out there. How'd you feel? Feels really good, especially this for my homie. He just passed away. I'm really excited that I could pull the win off this time. You know, there's a ton of people here once again for you. How does it feel that all these people are paying to come watch you perform in the cage? It feels good, really good. I mean, I went and I bought 100 shirts myself so that whoever bought tickets from me so much, I gave them for free. I mean, half of them came on time, but they're still getting their shirts. I mean, so I appreciate it a lot. You know, with that, I've seen other stuff where you sacrifice a lot to compete, man. How does it feel, you know, just to go in there and do so well with all the sacrifices you've made? Man, it's just great. Guys. I'm just really glad all my family's here to support me, that they even allow me to do this, take care of my kids, helping me, my girl, you know what I mean? She'd be wanting the attention and she, she sticks by me, she understands I'm doing something big here. I'm gonna do it. Another amateur win? And it is pro in your future? Um, that's for my coaches, but I think there's a 10, 10 Ami fight rule that they're trying to enforce. So I'll stick with that. Congrats, man. Great fight. Thank you. Thank you, Luis. I remember the moment. I'll never forget that moment. That moment? It was a moment that changed my life. I'd been training with my team for months, and now we had been called up for the first time. The real deal. Wildfires were getting dangerously close to home. At that moment, I got my first taste of just how important the Guard is to my community. See how the Guard can be an important part of your life at NationalGuard.com. Rufus and Pettis Showtime Sports Bar, where you watch the fights with the fighters. I'm lightweight world champion Anthony Showtime Pettis, along with MMA trainer Duke Rufus. And come fight time, we want to see you at Showtime. Highway 100, one block north of Silver Spring. Rufus and Pettis Showtime Sports Bar, where you watch all MMA action on two 15-foot mega screens. I'm MMA coach Duke Rufus, along with lightweight world champion Anthony Showtime Pettis. Come fight time, we want to see you at Showtime. High 100, one block north of Silver Spring. We had been 
called up for the first time. Wildfires were getting close to home. At that moment, I got my first taste of just how important the Guard is. Be there for your community at NationalGuard.com. At that moment, it hit me. This is why I joined the Guard. I couldn't believe it. I just saved a life. Somebody from my hometown. Be there for your community at NationalGuard.com. This next matchup is a North American Fighting Championship lightweight battle between Bill Finn's Shark Bite MMA, Devin Seitz out of Edgerton, Wisconsin, taking on Rufus Sport MMA's Kevin Vasquez out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Don't blink right away here, Scott. Devin comes out with a big right right away. I think it impressed a lot of people and surprised a lot of people. You know, right? It, it was it was very close to looking like maybe it was going to be over, but Kevin, you know, puts up puts on a game and gets up there and is able to change the momentum a little bit. Fans had an awesome time, and this is one of the fights that really electrified them at NAFC Armageddon. You know, you're going to see both guys trade off and on here. It's just one of those that went back and forth, especially after that first shot. I mean, that scores big points to the judges, and it's going to be up to Vasquez to really, really kind of get back on it and show that he wasn't too hurt and clear those cobwebs. Yeah, definitely uh, Sites came out uh, showing that he meant business and uh, rung Vasquez's bell. Every single throw that Sites, if you watch, every single throw is just looking to end the fight. You know, he's not he's not saving gas. He's going out there to put it and put it in end as fast as he can. You just Sorry, oh, go ahead. You just see, you know, Sites, you know, he tried to throw those huge shots and Vasco's had enough. He's like, you know, I have to play defense on this. And it really kind of changed the momentum a little when he was able to slow down some of the bigger shots, kind of avoid them, and then get back to his game a little later on. Again, first round action, lightweight matchup. Shark Bite MMA's Devin Sites against Rufus Sport MMA's Kevin Vasquez. You know, it's two guys making their debuts, and it's always exciting because you never know what you're going to get. You know, some guys may look awesome in practice, some guys, and, you know, they may come out and just just surprise you. And this one, I think we saw two guys that were, you know, really talented and really were able to put on a show once that cage closed. That's one thing about NAFC Armageddon. You're going to see more talented amateurs on this card than you might see in a lifetime. A lot of people were surprised at actually the bout that they were watching. They'd say, oh, that was an amateur bout? They looked like pros. And they really did. A lot of composure shown by the majority of fighters on the card that night. That, that's just a testament to the, you know, the scene here in Wisconsin and the ability of coaches to get these guys prepared and have them ready to put on a show like they have been fighting for 10 years. Yep, you don't see guys uh, kind of freaking out and going crazy when they find themselves in unnatural positions. Really, all the gyms are concentrating on the full-on mixed martial arts arsenal that a fighter can bring into the cage. You're not just seeing good strikers or good grapplers anymore. The wrestlers are becoming excellent at striking, and the strikers are really getting their jiu-jitsu down, getting their stripes, getting their belt promotions, and moving along. Speaking of jiu-jitsu, if you saw there, Vasquez was very close to having an armbar, and he looked like he had that thing pretty, you know, like locked in. And now you see the choke again. And this was, you know, fans were going nuts. You know, people were really excited. Sites comes back just looking for those huge shots. That was one of my favorite moments, you know, to end that round. Vasquez does what we saw, you know, Anthony Showtime Pettis do against Guido is look for that crazy kick from his back. That's one of those exciting things we did here from the guys here at Lucas Sport. And then you see, you know, Bill Finn now, he's, you know, there's a lot he's got to talk to him about, you know, some crazy strikes coming in. You also got to tell your guy, hey, you're throwing some big shots. And unless your cardio is, you know, at the top level, that's going to really get you fatigued later on. There is Bill Finn. Talking to Devin Sites. Definitely, you know, this was one of the more intriguing bouts we saw all my let's say. Just both guys really showing different styles and different different levels of how they thought they wanted to end a fight. As you were saying, both fighters uh, making their uh, debut. Excellent job of matchmaking by NAFC matchmaker Mike Camp. Always does a great job, matchmates for a lot of the top promotions in the country. You know, Mike always says, if an amateur, if it gets out of the first round, Mike's happy. Because this one did, and plenty of them did. Plenty of went them out did. of the first round. Exactly, exactly, which is a testament to good matchmaking. You know, 
it's not a slaughter or massacre right in the first 10, 15 seconds. Well, we've all been to amateur shows where about 8 out of 10 fights end in the first 15 seconds. So it was refreshing to see some real mixed martial arts action throughout the night. Now, all, all the fighters, again, to heap praise, but um, all the fighters on NAFC Armageddon, fearless. You know, if their coaches were saying, this is where you're going to fight on this particular card, this was an easy one to match. Uh, Mike Camp was telling me because the fighters, they were ready to do battle. They weren't so concerned about padding their records with an easy victory. They all wanted to fight someone uh, as tough or tougher than them. That's the beauty. I, you know, that's why I love covering amateur mixed martial arts. You see guys that have never fought or guys that have, and it's just guys that want to put on great shows and trying to test their abilities. Right here. Go ahead. Boss was picking up uh, the action a little bit. There's some ground going on here. Sykes trying to flip him off his back. You know, definitely showing good strikes when he get in top position. And then, you know, another chance where his, his submissions were eerily close to finishing the fight a few times in this one. Again, the composure of his amateur fighters shines through and enables him to get into some of the later minutes and later rounds of these fights. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely not in position, but you just got to keep working. You know, he got the body triangle there, and it's a really good move to take some of that energy out and really kind of work his game now and show, you know, what, what his training's going to do and how he's going to make this his fight. Definitely, it's awesome just to see the progression from becoming a student at an MMA academy all of a sudden sparring with the fight team and now taking your first actual bout in the cage in front of a live audience. It's something special to be said about that. Well, it's something to be proud of and how awesome that he's featured on TV. Vasco's working the body. Not so much room for a submission yet, but he's locked in. The, you know, the judges are all taking notice of this. This is just, you know, dominating in this round after, after a tough start to the fight. You know, he's definitely able to get back into his spot and put it that way. Not much sights can do to shake uh, Kevin Vasquez off of him. Oh, with that, with that leg locked in, he's just helpless almost. You really need to find a way to get him off you by jumping forward or something. Well, with experience, Vasquez will come up with... Uh, you know, what he can do from this position a little bit more to uh, take advantage of it. But he is controlling the fight right now. He's got sights his back. And you see there, too, his coaches are yelling at him and he's, you know, listening. I saw that so much this card where, coach, you know, in pros you don't see it. Guys were heeding their advice of their, of their coaches and stat of corners and just really using that to their advantage as every fighter should. You know, it's fun to see when a fight gets back on the feet. Both guys just striking, but Vasquez knows where he's got the advantage, and it's going for that takedown. He secures it right as the bell sounds. You know, it was, it was an exciting fight right away. You know, uh, Sites comes in with a huge shot. But Vasquez was able to just, you know, work his game and finally come back, take those last two rounds, and earn, earn a decision in his amateur debut. Wisconsin MMA Today reporter Paul Flatten here with Kevin Vasquez. Kevin, that was a war, man. How do you feel after that? Oh, man, that guy rocked me. Wow, like, I, I didn't even see the punch coming. Next thing I know, I was on the ground. He's a great fighter, man. All props to him. Kevin, uh, had a shark bite on MMA. It was awesome. It was a once in a lifetime experience, you know? Actually, I'm going to keep on doing this, so not once in a lifetime, but it was an awesome experience. I can't even explain it. You know, he hit you right away with that shot you're talking about, but then you recovered, you recuperated, and you were able to get back and show your game. You know, were you, were you feeling the effects of that the whole way through, though? You know what? Um, he, when he rocked me, I was on the ground, and I was like, what the heck just happened? Like, I had no idea how I got on there. You know, I was rocked for a little bit. I was able to get full guard, and uh, I recovered from there, so I was all right. I was pretty mad. That's probably why I did that much better the best two rounds. You know, you really showed your perseverance and just, you know, is that kind of the type of guys that train out of Rufus Sport? Oh man, Rufus Sport is just, Rufus Sport is just a camp like no other. Man, we have really tough guys, really strong guys, everybody, it's just amazing, it's just amazing. It's a great chance to fight for a guy like Duke Rufus. It's awesome. Congrats, man. Thank you. Nice job. I remember the moment clearly. I'll never forget that moment. As long as I live. I realized that moment. When we first saw the damage, these people really needed us. And I was going to make a difference right here in my community. Together with local responders, we cleared trees and collapsed walls. We had
had to get to the family trap beneath. As a citizen soldier, I made a difference. Be there for your community at NationalGuard.com. Rufus and Pettis Showtime Sports Bar, where you watch the fights with the fighters. I'm lightweight world champion Anthony Showtime Pettis, along with MMA trainer Duke Rufus. And come fight time, we want to see you at Showtime. Highway 100, one block north of Silver Spring. Rufus and Pettis Showtime Sports Bar, where you watch all MMA action on two 15-foot mega screens. I'm MMA coach Duke Rufus, along with lightweight world champion Anthony Showtime Pettis. Come fight time, we want to see you at Showtime. High 100, one block north of Silver Spring. that moment, it hit me. This is why I joined the Guard. I couldn't believe it. I just saved a life. Somebody from my hometown. Be there for your community at NationalGuard.com. I realized at that moment, these people really needed us. And I was going to make a difference right here in my community. Be there for your community at NationalGuard.com. This next North American Fighting Championship welterweight matchup features Bill Finns, Sharkbite MMA's Kevin Tatter fighting out of Edgerton, Wisconsin against Rufus Sport MMA's Armandale Rude Boy Cameron out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You know, Scott, this is one I was pretty interested to see. A week early, Armandale, he looked great at the Combat Corner Grappling Championship. He did, going Paul. Almost to the He went to the finals and almost pulled off what would have been a huge upset. So it's exciting. People got to see after his strong wrestling and grappling game, now we get to see a striking game. Yeah, he's someone that's raring to go and get into mixed martial arts. Great uh, high school wrestling career. Kevin Tatter, no slouch either. Any of the guys, once again, all of the gyms that have featured on NAFC Armageddon, very, very, very tough, tough MMA academies uh, cropping up here in Wisconsin across the Midwest. Bill Finn, he had Kevin Tanner ready for this. And actually, he's got uh, Armandale right here. You know, it seems like he kind of went for and, a sloppy guillotine that yep. just wasn't going to work. And right. then right there, Armandale just gets that. And when this, he, this guy's already showing that he's got power, you could not want to be on the bottom of those strikes. You know, huge, go ahead, go ahead. A huge crowd on hand as well for Armandale Cameron. Big, big fan base. And here's where the fight kind of got interesting. He lands those knees and then he starts throwing shots to the back of the head. Some people thought it was over, but as you see referee Tom DeFelice, that shot landed on the crown of the back of the neck there. He, he does deduct uh, one point. A, a succession of, of moves, uh, obviously unable to deliver any type of warning. It was close, too. I, you know, people saw this from both sides. It kind of depended on the angle. Glad we have the video here where, you know, he goes for that and starts just with the hammer fist down. You know, you see how that, that plays out. You know, you can't be sloppy at that position. you got to be very careful where you land those strikes. So right now, of course, the ring physician is um, going to check uh, Tatter and see if he's going to be able to continue or not. And as it uh, turns out in this fight, Tatter is unable to continue. Um, the referee does rule it an intentional blow by Cameron, thus ending the fight and giving Tatter the uh, victory by disqualification of Armandale Cameron. Yep, it's just one of those things, you know, a lot of, a lot of heart, a lot of stuff, but you got to be careful where you throw those punches. Definitely. So, word of the wise to all fighters, definitely know the uh, legal areas are for striking and the illegal areas. Again, two sides, uh, you know, watching this fight, uh, some thought Armandale was uh, in, in the clear on this. And of course, uh, the referee uh, disagreed and uh, disqualified him for the illegal blow. I remember the moment. I'll never forget that moment. That changed my life. At that moment, it hit me. This is why I joined the Guard. We're soldiers, always ready to protect our country. But we've also got communities. 
family, friends, neighbors who count on us. I couldn't believe it. I just saved a life. Somebody from my hometown. See what it means to be a citizen soldier at NationalGuard.com. Rufus and Pettis Showtime Sports Bar, where you watch the fights with the fighters. I'm lightweight world champion Anthony Showtime Pettis, along with MMA trainer Duke Rufus. And come fight time, we want to see you at Showtime. Highway 100, one block north of Silver Spring. Rufus and Pettis Showtime Sports Bar, where you watch all MMA action on two 15-foot mega screens. I'm MMA coach Duke Rufus, along with lightweight world champion Anthony Showtime Pettis. Come fight time, we want to see you at Showtime. Highway 100, one block north of Silver Spring. What's up, this is Anthony Pettis, and today's technique of the week is going to be the high kick, one of my favorite moves to use in the octagon. The objective of the high kick is to take your leg and uh, place it across your opponent's head. Um, there's lots of ways to set it up. My favorite way is to use my hands. I disguise my uh, kick through my punches, and that gives me a window of opportunity to let my leg fly. So uh, when we're in our fighting stance, I use my punches to disguise my kick, and when I'm ready, I just place the kick right across my opponent's head and right back down. That's the technique of the week. Thank you for tuning in to Wisconsin MMA Today and supporting mixed martial arts in our community. I'm Scott Joffe. And I'm Paul Blatt. And we'll see you next week.